Hey dudes, welcome back to another episode of our Moss Men's Team podcast. You are about to listen to one of our prior team meetings. If you ever want to join one of our live sessions that we have every Monday and Friday, head over to romas.com. That's R-H-O-M-A-S dot com and put your email in and we will send you a live link every time we record. We generally record on Mondays and Fridays. So if you ever want to be on the actual podcast, if we bring men up all the time to talk about their goals, talk about their obstacles, etc., uh, head over to ramas.com. And then also, if you want to help support the channel grow and also have access to exclusive content, book reviews, extra whiteboard sessions, etc., and some coaching sessions, uh, head over to patreon.com and support us. We would love it. But if not, no biggie. Um, we'll see you on the live sessions. Later, dudes. Enjoy this podcast. Oh, my God. We're live, dude. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Romas Men's Team. Here at my right is the creator of Romas Men's Team, Wes Rollins. Wes, how the hell are you? What's up, man? How you doing, By the way, uh, I have to give a shout out to the cheapest seltzer water available, but it's like, I swear it's the best. Like, I've tried Pellegrino, all of the above, and like, this is one secret to like keeping my weight down um, and in shape. Like, I thoroughly, actually, you, you and your dad introduced me to seltzer, and I think you guys just put cranberry in or whatever, mm -hmm. but the, I've been drinking this thing for years. It's from Ralph's out here in California. It's just unreal. Because yeah. I think a lot of people consume their calories through liquid, and uh, at the end of the day, if you're consuming your calories through liquid, you probably have an excess, like, five, 600 calories through liquid, which is unnecessary. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Dude, why don't we, uh, should, up, man? should we give everybody a, uh, a little orientation as to exactly what this is? Hell yeah. Let's do it. All right. Um, so Wes has started the Romas. Well, explain how you started this so then I can – because I, I kind of came in a little later. So explain yeah, it from so, the beginning. Yeah, so uh, so kind of a quick little summary is um, I guess the reason if you really want to get like really deep, and I know you kind of like doing that, um, is I was raised by a single mom. Dad left town when I was super young and uh, went through a bunch of like – Psych, you know, not not psychologists, but I went to seminars and so on that talk about psychology and ended up getting to the root of of why like why I had like a decent amount of anger or aggression or ambition, all of the above. And I found out it was because of my dad leaving when I was a kid. But anyway, it kind of set me on this path when I was a child to like constantly choke and go and try to figure out how to be masculine or whatever you want to call it. Like rather it be from like learning how to throw a football, learning how to do all those things. I just I was constantly in pursuit of this knowledge of like how to be a man, which ultimately I think was a great thing. Um, but it wasn't an intellectual thing. It was an emotional thing. It was trying to figure out kind of the code, the, the pattern of being a guy because I didn't have a guy to role model. I was raised by a single mom and I didn't have any, any siblings. So that being said, anyway, uh, as I grew up, played sports all the time, blah, blah, blah. And then fast forward, that pattern really helped me of like trying to study Okay, how do you how do you be a big strong guy? How do you be successful? All of those things, and I could go into a million stories about it. But then, um, after college, I was kind of left with, oh, I need to navigate this landscape uh, myself. And it wasn't, I guess, I missed the team aspect. So I went and I created a little team, um, just a, of guys who would talk about their goals. As corny as that sounds. Uh, just like every week we'd meet and we called it, I forget what we called it, but it was like a value-based system. We'd have a value wheel. And it was like, okay, if, if we had to judge ourselves and give ourselves a scorecard of how we the results that we're producing and the inputs we're putting in the world, uh, where would we sit? And it was phenomenal. Did it for I did it for many, many, many years, different versions of it. And then eventually, you know, and, and we got outstanding results. And it was the cool results from anywhere from, you know, you know, our buddy Kev lost, you know, lost a hundred pounds. Um, I got to wall street. Um, our buddy Kyle was in, he'd like produced outstanding results. Like all of these things, it just gave us a place to talk about in a non corny and, and protected way of saying, what are you after? What are you trying to accomplish and how can we help you? And then gave us, it gave us a, a meeting ground to say, okay, what were your wins? What did you try this week and, or this month? And what did you win at and what did you fail at that you might want to recommit to? And uh, and it was just awesome. It was just awesome having a team. You know, we were treating life like an athlete would treat his sport. And then eventually somebody said, well, why didn't you put it up online? And they, they told me that, I don't know, like must have been like five years ago. But just I was always kind of hesitant because I don't know, just I wasn't familiar with online and I was growing the investment business and all of those things. 
And then eventually somebody said, well, don't you think it's your obligation? Like if you think this core group of guys that you're meeting with and now you're setting goals every week, every month, every year, shouldn't you share with as many people as possible? And that person convinced me and that's, that's where we are, man. Hell yeah, dude. So, and then, so I was, uh, so I knew I, I went to college with Wes. So I, I know I've known Wes for a long time. And, uh, you know, Wes is always, he's always been on, on his Dean as the Muslims would say, but he's always been like <laughs> after very specifically focused on stuff. Whereas I was always kind of like, I felt like out in orbit and just kind of, kind of half working, half fucking off, half just kind of like all over the place. And it, it just doesn't, for me, it never worked that well. So then I think last year, me, you, Butterly, Rainey, Spud, we all did. And I, th- I think Kevin, we all did one of the things you were talking about. So I, I took my basically pretty chaotic life and just, uh, just applied your system to it at first, very kind of unsuccessfully and still not like, you know, fully or whatever. But I started kind of thinking and like actually mapping out my days rather than, you know, just kind of waking up and like being like, Oh, I don't know. What am I going to do today? Blah, blah. And dude, it was like, not even from a perspective of uh, like, I definitely got stuff done. But I just felt better when I had like an actual thing of like, what am I doing today? Because then I have a thing to get done. And then when I, this is my problem, I can never relax because I never knew when I was actually yep. done or not. So I would like kind of do stuff like, I don't know if I did enough. Blah, blah, blah. And then there was never a time I could just turn off and relax. And I, you know, I spent years like that. So Oh, you we, can spend uh, an entire lifetime like that. Oh, big time, man. So then like we started doing that. I'm like, dude, this works. This is like awesome how well this works. And, you know, just in terms of feeling better and kind of getting the stuff done that you want to get done. And then, you know, that's just, there's that. And then there's just the human element of having people to talk to about this stuff. And dude, like from, we talked on episodes before from doing like, I just like the Under Armour fitness things with my friends, having like a group of people to like banner back and forth with and check in with. Dude, I went from running like, Never really, like honestly, like two miles a year, literally about like two miles a year to about like 20 miles a month. I just did 5,000 push-ups um, this month, which I, you know, I did 5,000 push-ups every 14 years before. So it's like in the 5, only 000, thing, that's crazy number. Dude, the only thing it is, is just having a little banter back and forth. Like, oh, you're not going to do it. And, I, and like seeing yep. like, oh shit, they just did it. All right. And it's just like it's fucking awesome. But um, so yeah, so then we started kind of met, I, we, I think I did like an interview for the Romas men's team. We started messing yep. around and then, you know, it was just kind of like, why not just, you know, start ripping this thing weekly. And the idea is, sorry, this is a very long winded introduction. No, no, you know please, man. The idea is you, you check in Monday, you call your shots. We'll call our shots. Anyone has any kind of issues or things they're kind of working on, feel free to throw something in the chat. Um, yep. and I think it's live on YouTube as well. Oh, awesome. Um, so, and the idea is, you know, we're going to power through our weeks, call our shots, see what we did. And then on Friday we check back in, you know, whatever, what do we get done? What do we do? Anything? Was there any huge wins for anyone? Let us know. And, you know, shout you out. Cool thing about crowdcast is I can pull you right up. Um, Oh dude, that would be pretty sick. I didn't know, I didn't know that. That'd be super cool. Yeah. If we can get talk to somebody who's dealing with something or says, Hey, I've got a goal and, and let's chat through it. Hell, that, I, I love that. That's exactly why, why I'm doing this. Yeah, just a, it's the the thing that it's such a, a non zero sum thing because it's like the the more the more people on it and just kind of like you know structuring their day and kind of reporting back with people. It's not like a you better do this or you not. It's like it just feels mm-hmm. good and it's nice. So it's like you know, it's I can say personally this worked for me tremendously in terms of like just getting stuff done and you know squatting up and just have just having fun man rather than being kind of floating around like space junk and being like oh i don't know what i'm doing uh. yeah well i think i think number one there is for sure a form a formula for performance and results as 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 infomercially as that sounds and i hate fucking sounding that way um but there just is just like there's a formula for for basketball i grew up playing basketball my entire life there, like there are moves there are things there are patterns that you can learn and then and then it's it's just about executing them, and you're not going to be perfect. Like when when you learn how to do a jump shot the first time, it, you literally spend the next ten years of your basketball career trying to learn how to perfect it. But along the way, you can produce outstanding results. That's the first thing. The second thing is, as men, we have not really. I would argue that not only have we not been really given a proper outlet to be aggressive, we are being told to be less aggressive. Um, because there's a confusion going on in society right now saying that, oh, aggressive men are bad. And that's not the truth. Yes, aggression placed in the wrong direction can be incredibly terrible for society. But aggression placed in the correct direction uh, can be absolutely outstanding. I would argue if you look at 
Jeff Bezos, for instance, of Amazon.com, right? That is an example. He's the founder of Amazon. That is the that is an example of uh, a bright, hardworking male using his aggression in a positive way. So how can we get more men on on board rather than it's like, man, we're putting so many men just in a passive in, in the passenger seat right now because they feel like they're handcuffed. And uh, I think that's terrible for society and, and terrible for families, terrible for uh, it, the, the men as individuals. So what can we do to give men a team? And dude, just to be honest, like, I need, a, I need the team. Like yeah. 100%, I 100% need you and the rest of the guys we do gold setting with because it just ups the level of the game and it keeps me engaged with life to a degree that I otherwise would not have uh, not have been. Well, it's funny because we did a lot of, and I have a, a point to that from the last one, but we did a lot of these before even like putting them out. And I was like, uh, sorry, is that me? Yes, yeah, me. I was just from doing them with you before we even put them out, I was do it getting so much more stuff done. I didn't have that weird kind of anxiety of like, I'm not doing enough or like, what am I even doing? Where I'd be like going downstairs, like I got to work. And I'm just like, jumping between 90 different things online, not really getting anything done. So just before we even put these out, I had a, like a tremendous, you know, uptick in terms of just the way I felt, the stuff I was getting done. And then my exercise went up like by a thousand percent. Um, especially because the thing is, it's like whenever I say I'm going to do a thing and there's somebody on the other end of that, be like, did you do that thing? Because if it's just yep. me, I can be like, take it easy, bud. You, you worked hard. But I tell somebody else and they're like, you didn't do it. I'm like, yeah. And I, mm. and I will get it done because, you know, um, but to go on your, what you were saying about kind of like passivity, um, versus kind of, uh, whatchamacallit, <sighs> the passivity versus kind of like this aggression. It made me think of what we talked about before, which was the book, the untethered soul and the, the issue you were saying where it's like, well, there's part of this, you know, this kind of this mindful approach that almost makes me feel like it's telling me to kind of just be like, eh, whatever. And kind of let go. And I think last night I was thinking about this. I think the difference, there's a difference between clinging and striving and striving. If you're clinging, that's that, that's what I think it's geared more towards where it's like, you're trying to control external events from an almost kind of not passive, but you're trying to control them from a totally known, like a little safe nucleus and like a, your safe known territory. Whereas mm -hmm. striving, you're out in the unknown doing stuff. And I, I don't, I don't think that kind of stuff tells you not to strive. It just tells people not to cling and control. Right. Without, without, you know, it, and if you want things to, without doing the appropriate things to actually, you know, make there, there's two ways to kind of alter reality. It's by controlling others and just kind of going out into the, the unknown by yourself. And so. dude, I completely, completely agree. And this might be an example. And I'm, I'm blown away at this technology because I work strictly in finance. Like I strictly with you know, finance software, et cetera. Um, but I'm looking at some of the comments over here on the right. And uh, how are we able to comment on their comments or talk about? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, seeing absolutely. some really cool stuff, man. It's, it, this is awesome. It's really, really cool. Um, yeah. There's one guy, I, I, and I want to call, I, and I want to make sure everybody feels comfortable here. But there is a guy here. If if you don't mind, you, you guys see the guy who said he had a heart attack recently? Yeah, yeah. I would love to chat about that. Or is there a way to pull him up if he wants to be, or or we can just even have a conversation about it because I, I that's a phenomenal topic. Yeah, I mean, uh, David, you want to come up? I think he yeah. would. So, what is his name? Uh, Dead Eye. I know Dead Eye, Davy. Okay. If if you, if dude, uh, Davy, if you're comfortable with it, we'd love to have you on and, and chat through it. Um, if not, we'll give it you know five or five or six seconds. We can we can talk through some some interesting topics within the realm of heart attacks and so on. Because um, he said I had a heart attack at 35, and do that. You know, first of all, I'm very sorry to hear that. And then uh, love to be able to support you in some way, um, just share our thoughts. And dude, this was the cool thing about about the team is that like if you if you guys were here in person when we do our uh, when we do our oh he said give me a minute uh, mm -hmm. my wife will be back and okay cool um, yeah so let us know David when, if you want to come on um, so when we do our goal setting as a, as a team when we're in person the cool thing is is like somebody will bring up an issue or they'll bring up a goal and they say and we say okay do you want to do you want to chat through it like what do you want everybody's opinion and here's the cool thing i think there needs to be a differentiation there's a difference between opinion and advice so one thing i try to always tell people is like look i'm not giving you advice i'm giving you my opinion and let's go around the table and everybody can bring their life experiences and their and putting your best interest in mind and saying okay well if i were in your shoes knowing what i know and also knowing like the stuff that i've learned personally here's what i would do if i were you and then all of a sudden you've got 
three or four or five collective opinions and you can pick out the best version of those or a collective cocktail of those and uh, move on with it. So uh, that's why I love, I'm super, super pumped about this live thing, man. This is really cool to see. Yeah. It fucking rules, so thank man. you for everybody listening. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. very surreal experience for me. <laughs> it takes, it takes it to another level, man. It does. Man. So it's cool. in terms of what you were saying something about, so that, sorry, that was my whole, uh, point to the thing you were talking about before of like, you know, that because the my, the reason I bring that up is the mindfulness stuff helps so much. It's just a lot of times administered by almost like uh, cartoonish people who take it into mm -hmm. this like wild, almost competitive spiritual realm where it's like to even want anything is stupid. And it's like, all right, man, that's cool. You know, if, if I had all my bills paid for the rest of my life, I could sit there and like go to like 20 day silence retreats and be like, yeah, well, who cares? But it's like, I have to pay a mortgage. So, you know, it's like, I want to use those skills so that I can kind of just, you know, function better rather than trying to like completely mm -hmm. isolate myself and, you know, be like, I'm going on a spiritual quest, but. Um, oh yeah. Well, I was looking into recently uh, sort of, hormonal play in performance and what hormones are released when you perform and what is more sustainable and i'm still in the process of release of, of uh of gathering that when i have more I'll, I'll i'll tell you guys about it but basically from my understanding is something like mindfulness or meditation what it allows you to do is is borderline learn how to at least for me this is my interpretation when it comes to performance being able to clear out everything and have a stillness so it's just you and the thing that you're trying to work on. So when it comes to productivity or performance in life, whether it be athletics or or your job or family or whatever, allowing, giving your brain the ability to, to send, to zoom everything else out and zoom the thing that you're working on in, if that makes sense. So when it comes to execution throughout the day, number one, can you... I, I use a model called ITPAR. So imagine, think, plan, act, reflect, repeat. So are you able to, number one, identify what exactly you want? And that is an incredibly difficult thing to do. It sounds so simple, but it's incredibly difficult. The first, so that's the prerequisite. Like imagine and think about what you want. And then that's, that's the IT. And then how are you going to plan it? So then plan it on paper or I recommend either on paper or like a calendar, like Google Calendar. I do like Google Calendar. Um, and then you have a digital calendar because you can move the time blocks around. So setting those time blocks in a space where it says, okay, I want to work on my physical body. I'm, I am going to dedicate an hour a day. So block out that each, uh, for the entire week, each day for the entire week. Okay, great. Well, then eventually you find, oh shit, now you have to do the thing. Right, so now I've got your time blocks. I'm going to work for an hour today on my body. I'm going to work for an hour today on emails. I'm going to work for an hour today, whatever it is. I, I tend to do two-hour time blocks, and I think, Matt, you do the same. Mm -hmm. So whatever those are. Okay, fine. Now, that's kind of the easy part. Not the easy part, but that's like you can kind of get a quick moment, momentum. The difficult part comes in. It's like, okay, now that time block is, is starting. So what do I do? Oh, now I've got to go through the emails or now I've got to do the push-ups, whatever that is. That's where, in my opinion, the mindfulness or the meditative, the meditative muscle comes in. It's like, in my opinion, number one, action first and foremost is about not doing the 99% of other things that you could be doing at the time. And that is very difficult because there's opportunity cost to all of our actions. So, okay, you said you're going to work on emails, but you've got your, your phone in the background dinging and your girlfriend's texting you or whatever it is, right? So it's, I think it's so much more difficult in the not doing than it is the doing, if that makes sense. So setting up your environment so those distractions don't come in. And there's a phenomenal book on this called Deep Work uh, by Cal Newport. Just absolutely phenomenal book. Goes through exactly why deep, what he calls deep work, which is like deep focused activity. And that's where I got the concept of like really going going full in on uh, on time blocking. Yeah, that's that's the number one thing too of like, because <clears throat> I, I always could be like, you know, I can show up and work and I can do this. But like when you start doing it, especially when you do stuff for yourself, it's like there's like a million things you can do. And to be able to sit down and be like, I'm only doing this one thing, as simple as it sounds, like you're saying, it's so it's so hard. And as soon as oh, I was yeah. able to actually like, and it it does take, because it's like, this is the stuff I never wanted to do. I'm like, I'm not drawing out. I used to argue with Brittany. I'm not drawing on a schedule. What am I going to have a little piece of paper and follow it? Ugh. And then I did that and I'm like, God damn it, this makes my life so much easier. So I, mm. I kind of had to eat oh, my yeah. words on that. And it's like, especially when you said the time blocking of like, you know, you know, I have a wife, uh, a daughter. 
I have to go and set it all up and have conversations. Well, not with my daughter yet. She's just kind of, you know, flails around on the ground. Mm -hmm. But with Brittany, it's like, I have to have like conversations and I have to structure. If I don't structure out my day and you know, both of our days, we're fighting, we're arguing because we mm -hmm. both have these expectations. It's like, Oh, I thought that it's like, so it, I, if the more I organize my stuff, the more legitimate it seems to her, if, to be honest, if I'm like, well, I have this thing drawn up and they're like, Oh, okay. Rather than being like, I just want to do this. And they're like, I want to do this too. But if you hit, if you can ac actually organize yourself, um, for me, that's been super helpful. Of like setting oh, yeah. up days. And now I get the time where it's like, I have two hours to do this. I better not squander it because I fought yep. hard for these two hours, you know, whether that's anything. Um, I think dead eye Davey said he's good to hop on too. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then, uh, Delco Jim, I, I, number one, thanks for the, uh, is I, I the recommendation of miracle of mindfulness by, uh, et cetera. Um, and then I like what he's saying. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's that whole uh, Conor McGregor quote that precision beats power. The more precise you can be, um, oh man, it's yeah, I've found it so true. A lot of people, and I hate kind of dropping this, but just just to let you know that that these types of things do produce results, extreme results. So my partner and I in our investment management business, we just hit two hundred million dollars in assets in our management a couple of weeks ago, and it is because of these things, right? Like precise action not deciding what not to do is just as important if not more important than deciding what to do and then focusing specifically on that um and uh so yeah so uh yeah let's uh have dead eye davy if that's cool, That'd be cool he should be on. popping up pretty soon yeah and again i always think about the alternative so it's like the alternative to not doing this for me personally and you know they, it might not be for everybody but for me personally the alternative to not doing this is this kind of like default mode where i'm just more or less distracted and ruminating until I get so tired that I fall asleep. And it's mm -hmm. like when I really structure my day, I do it last week. I got, I mean, from, from last week when we checked in on Friday, there was the first week of doing the Mondays to Fridays thing. I've been doing learning modules for psych no, and trying to build these online classes. Dude, I was doing like one a week. If that, because you know, mm -hmm. I'd start to do it. I'd be like, does this suck? What is it? And then like, you know, as soon as I was talking to you, like, here's exactly what I want to get done. I got done like, I think six learning modules in my introduction video, which I was putting off big time. I got mm -hmm. all of them done so fast because it's like, if you think about the stuff that you want to do, uh, especially when it's like recording a video or like I was just making online classes. All I have to do is move my physical body from my second floor where I wake up to my basement, turn on my computer and do this thing. And there's this like, you know, I think in the war of art or whatever, they talk about resistance and, but like you're constantly encountering resistance from within without and having this, like having this to wake up the first thing in the morning. I, for every morning I forget, I come down, I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Like, all right, I'll meditate. Cause I know that's one of my habits while I'm meditating. I go, Ooh, my piece of paper that has all my stuff. I have to dude. I'm lost without it. I wake up and as mm -hmm. soon as I can like, I'm like, Oh, here I come. And I get on there. My whole day just takes a different shape than it would have if I had just been up to, you know, if trying to store my to-do list in my brain, is just like, a, it's a, it's like the worst personal assistant you can have. Cause it's like a personal assistant. That's like, um, but what if you do this? And you're like, shut, shut up. Yep. A piece of paper is just like, bam, checking it off. Boom, boom. And you know, it's awesome. Oh yeah. And then the cool thing is, so I don't know about you, but you know, so my girlfriend will call me typically around like noon time, let's just say every work day. And when, when you're able to, when I'm able to look at my list and show, oh, like, what do you do this morning? And then I read off like 15 things right before noon. It's just a cool experience when you, and you give yourself the ability to be able to stop and turn around saying, oh, wow, in a few hours, I accomplished 15 things that were important that are moving the needle of progress. So, uh, so I think it's a must, man. The, the only bummer is like, yeah, you have to do it, right? Like there's a little bit of admin involved, like planning and thinking ahead of time. And you might have some resistance to that originally, but then once, once you're on it and you see, uh, sort of like points on your scoreboard, it's addicting, man. It really is addicting. And that's why, and then the, that's why the team is here also to help support you, give you a little bit of that praise of saying like, Hey man, we're all in this together, regardless of what the goals are, right? We're all in this together and we can help each other move forward. Yeah, especially for me, shame is a powerful motivator. So if I know I have to, if I'm like, I think about it, and I'm like, like I, I was talking so much shit about those push-ups. I was like, I can't. I have to. I have to do these. I can't oh, get yeah. made fun of. I, I I can't get made fun of by my brother. I have to do these. Hundred percent, uh, man. 
Well, you know, you can use, you can, it's like, I think that's a healthy way to use it of like, you know, of using that kind of neuroticism that I have, I inherently kind of have of like, all right, mm. well, I'll just say I'm going to do a thing and then get it. And if I don't, you know, it's like, I know I tried my best or I, I was absolutely kind of a uh, thrown off course. I think I'm waiting for, okay, he's trying to get on the laptop. Uh, yeah. I think he's on his phone. And then so, uh, thanks to Nick to, uh, to some of the other book recommendations, I believe, uh, yeah, Peaceful Warrior. Um, uh, thank you for those uh, sources, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. So you, so you said you had something about mental models while we wait mm. for. Yeah. So mental modeling, that's a good topic for today. Dude, I swear mental models uh, have gotten me through so many difficult parts of my life or just like little, like helping me bridge the gap on like, oh, maybe I don't feel like doing this or maybe life's a little tough right now. Um, I learned this practice of what's called mental modeling. I learned it from Charlie Munger, who is Warren Buffett's partner, Warren Buffett being the most successful investor who's ever lived. Um, I really am into his partner, Charlie Munger. Very, he's a lesser known, uh, he's a lesser known partner of Berkshire Hathaway. So this guy's phenomenal because he studies a million different disciplines and he, ta he takes the cornerstones of those disciplines and he applies them to problem solving in other areas of life. Um, Mental modeling is basically like little jujitsu moves of thought patterns so you can solve problems. So for instance, you can take a problem solving method in physics um, and help solve problems in everyday life. So for instance, if you're getting stuck on an issue, let's just say, oftentimes it helps to solve the inverse of that problem. So you're taking a mathematical principle of taking the inverse and you're applying it towards life. So for instance, let's say for your career, Oftentimes people get stuck on their career. What should I do for my career? I don't know what I'm passionate about yet and so on. Well, if you're getting stuck there, you can use the mental model of taking the inverse. Okay, so instead of maybe I'm having trouble finding out what I love doing, but what can I write down on paper as to what I absolutely hate doing? And then by the process of elimination, you start to narrow down the scope. So that's just an example. It's a very quick example of a mental model. It is a little quick way in mentally in your head of solving an issue very quickly or giving you a new insight on an issue very quickly so you can make progress. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes sense. So I write all of mine down. I probably have hundreds of them in here and they could be either quotes. It doesn't matter. Don't, don't get too tight on the definition of mental models, but these are little things that you can use to help make progress in your day. So for instance, if like I just wrote, wrote down one yesterday from Jeff Bezos, like these are kind of rules of thumb to help make progress in business. And for him, I was listening to an interview with him yesterday because I think I told you, Matt, before that I try to listen to a motivational thing every single morning on YouTube. Um, and for yesterday morning, it was Jeff Bezos. And he said, if you want to do more of something, simply reduce the friction. If you want to do less of something, simply increase the friction. And that sounds so simple, but it means you can apply that to all areas of life. So for instance, if you're trying to lose weight, right? What he was saying, if you if you're experiencing that you're you're gaining weight. Hold on a second. I think yep. Davey, can you mute your laptop? I think you're trying to get I think you're on something else. Yeah, here's some background noise. Go ahead, man. All right, cool. So for instance, so that that mental model of that Jeff Bezos was saying, if you want to do more of something, uh, reduce the friction. If you want to do less of something, increase the friction. The way you would do that in weight loss is in, is saying, okay, well, if you have snacks in your house, put them on the top shelf rather than the bottom shelf, or just remove them completely, right? Because that is friction towards your goal, or you want to put friction in the in between you and the chips, if that makes sense. So just little things like that, oftentimes, and it's not that we don't already know that stuff that, but it's, it's, do we use that stuff? So I keep a list, a running list of mental models in my phone at all times. Um, and then I review them probably on a weekly basis. And every single time, you know, I, I don't review all of them, but I read a list of 10 of them. And I say, Oh, that is applicable to the problem that I'm, I'm using now. And I'm telling you guys, if you use some of these things and jot them down, keep them in the list that you can review every day or every week, it'll help you on all these little obstacles of life for sure. Yeah, it kind of helps having like little, like just little axioms to kind of filter through things through. The one I use, I like the uh, towards and away moves a lot. When I was doing all yep. the act stuff, there's like, you know, it's a, is it a toward move or an away move? And, you know, you only yep. know that by like, well, what are you after? You know, that's like step one. Like it could be anything. It can be like better relationships with your friends and family, um, you know, better health and wellness, <clears throat> uh, money, whatever, whatever motivates you. It doesn't matter. But then it's this thing like, so when you're, you know, just trying to be mindful, like when you're doing in, 
if you're doing anything, you can go, oh, is this a towards or away move? And right now we're, you and I are doing the kind of like weight loss challenge thing. Yep. Um, which is, you know, I've lost four pounds, not bragging, but the, the thing that's helped oh, me yeah, man. Time is like, if, if I don't have in what, like a, a week, yeah, a little less than a week. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. So if nice, I don't man. have, hey, dude. but the, the problem is, is like before that I would eat every night and I'm, I'm like a, you know, a health conscious kind of dude, but I would eat every night until I was like, kind of like uh, full to the point of concern. Like I would eat to the point where I would like, I'd be like, like not able to get a full breath. Like it's just how I, I, it's just how I eat. And I, you know, so it's like that, you know, in my normal context, it's like I, I ate, I pigged out, I had a good dinner. But as soon as I enter a yep. little thing with a goal, now that's an away move. And it's not, again, it's not a bad thing. It's not right or wrong. It's just like, well, what am I trying to have functionally? How does this work for me? And like, yep. you know, going to get that second helping or whatever I was eating right before going to bed. Yeah, I was gorging like a Roman emperor. Anything I would like, – right, right before I would go to bed, I would just fucking pig out. But now that I have, like you were saying, like a mental model or something that I'm filtering my thoughts through or my actions more importantly, I would go, that's ah, an away move right now. And again, you can boil that down again. My That stuff hits my Dude, I'm brain. Right, I'm writing it down right now. That's, a, boils, that's a phenomenal mental model. Of course, in a way, it's fantastic, man. And it's like it, it boiled down to the point where I'd like start to put salad dressing on. I'd be like – I know deep down inside, this isn't a way of moving. And you don't have to go. I'm an extreme dude. You don't have to go as extreme as that. Um, and I know, Wes, I think you might even be more extreme than me. But it's like it, it helps to build some of that stuff in where it's like I don't need salad. And I'm just eating, you know, I'll just eat like you were showing me. Just add some fruit in with your vegetables and now you don't yep. need salad dressing. Dude, and it fucking works. Oh, yeah. It works all the time. So yeah, it's like no, the the way, that's my thing I use all the time. And in order to have that work, you have to have some orientation as to what you're after. Again. That can be anything, really. And I, I use again. I always use a uh, what is it? Health. I, th- I think you're the one who came up with them. Health, wealth, fitness, and personal growth. Oh no, I use health, wealth, friends and family, and personal growth. And personal yep. growth is my more kind of like I would say spiritual slash personal development side of like you know um, just trying to evolve the way I think constantly. I mean, dude, yep. think about uh, two years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do something like this just because I would have been too weird and neurotic and been like, eh, I don't know. Is that yeah. like one of those things that now it's like, what do I want to do? Oh, I have an overarching value. It's not even a, I guess it's a goal, but it's more of a goal. That's like kind of, it'll, it'll never really be complete where it's like, I want to help as many people. I, I can feel more grounded and content in their life in a way that helps them, you know, not thrash out, destroy themselves and others. Pretty, yep. you know, and that's that's something I want to do. So when when you start to, when that's your value and the weirdness comes up of like, yeah, but is this going to be? What, it's just, it, it just doesn't rise to that level. It's such a small thing. When you have an ideal that's above you, that stuff is just kind of like you know, it's like the stratosphere. You look down, and you're like, I don't even care. You know what I mean? When you think what you're actually yep. up against, it's it's kind of nice. I like, and that's what we talked about last week. My main struggle is, I think, judgment. Cause you know, coming, I had two older brothers, older cousins galore. You, I just got absolutely uh, psychically Alcatraz my whole life, dude. Oh yeah. Like I'm, I'm like really to the point where last week we were talking about how I just like running with your shirt off and how like I still, I'd see a person doing it. And I'm like, fuck you, dude. Who the fuck yeah. do you think? Oh, and it's like, I forced myself to do it the other day. And it was like, this is actually really pleasant <laughs> to have the sun on your skin, you know? So that was a, uh, that's something I struggle with. And again, having, and it's the same thing. Like when you're, when you're, this is something I think has to do a lot with, or helps a lot with even just like any kind of group, whether it's group therapy or just like a, mm-hmm. a just informal group like this. When you're, when you want to do a thing and you want to do a thing, but you're by yourself, it's hard to do that out in the world of a billion gazillion people and face the wrath of that. But having a group allows you to kind of test that out on a smaller scale of people you kind of trust. And then you kind of get that smaller group approval the thing you want to do and then you're more able to go hey, i'm going to go do this thing to everybody else because i know i have my little squad and i'm not just like going and i think this goes down deep in us like i know i'm not going to be isolated and judged into oblivion into a corner by myself because when you're in a group you're like yeah but i know i still have my squad so it's yep. like, you know and it, it just it's it's such a uh it's a peace of mind it's a peace of mind factor that i think runs really deep and it's something that should be you know people should be people shouldn't be out here doing this by themselves that's all Dude, I the the biggest secret that I have had um, of let's say let's say with like the the men's physique bodybuilding, way too many people give me way too much credit for saying, oh, like how'd you get to 
you know, to 2.8% body fat. How'd you get the trophies in, in men's league, blah, 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 all that stuff. And, and I'm not saying that pound my chest. I'm saying, because I'm strictly after like, how do you figure out the patterns to earn results? Dude, let's take bodybuilding. That was one of the easiest things I've ever done because I joined a team and the coach was phenomenal. And I, I've kind of, I have a, I have a formula to look for when I join a team. Number one, I want to be part of a team where I sit kind of towards the lower end of the, the hierarchy, if that makes sense, that there's, that let's say there's 10 to 20% people under me in terms of performance or of skill set, and the majority of them are above me because then I have something to strive for. And then at the top of the hierarchy, I need a coach who's con who's a phenomenal coach who's got the results. If I join a team like that, super easy. Mm -hmm. Unbelievably easy. Dude, honestly, doing the diet for the bodybuilding competitions, at this point, I think I've done like four or five somewhere in that category, um, if not six. Playing that game was so much easier, even though it seemed so much more extreme. The reason was because when you join a team, like when I join a team, you operate off of a motivation level that's subconscious. It's not synthetically manufactured. It's not like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna lose some weight because I'm telling myself that I'm going to. I wrote it down today. It's like, but then there's no accountability. There's no, there's none of these little, there's none of the, like when you're on a team, there's a thousand different influences that are playing at any given time. Right, like even even when it comes to just showing up to practice, right? Like you, you're not synthetically manufacturing that. Like practice is at this time, and everybody else is expecting you to be at practice. Like th there's so many little nuances to that motivation level as to why you show up and why you execute, even when you're running as hard. Like you know, if you join, if you go and play basketball on a basketball team, for sure you are doing way more cardio than you ever would on a treadmill by yourself. Oh my god! Right, so it's not even close. It's not yeah. even close. Yeah, so no, that, that's teams are where it's at, man, with performance and getting results. Yeah, they are, dude. I mean, it, it really, it, and again, it just, it's, there's, there's that for sure. And it's, that's like, that's like a byproduct too. It's like, for me, I like, I love the peace of mind. And then like all of a sudden, you know, it, it helps you once you kind of implement your like systems and put in, you know, to, to me, it's, I get frustrated because I, you know, it's like, I, I want to like write every day. I have all these things I want to do every day. I don't get to do them every day, but when I'm in this kind of group team context, my not getting to do it every day is like, I'm at like a 40% failure rate rather than like a hundred percent failure. Yep. So it's just like, you know, you're, when you're, when you think you're kind of slacking or not doing it, when you're with it, when you're nestled in this context, it's like, it's, it's funny what you get annoyed with when you're like, that was your best before. And now your yep. best before is your absolute worst. And you're like, dude. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Oh, also and, go ahead. Go ahead. No, sorry, please. I just want to make sure we're not leaving Davey. I have no idea how this stuff works. So I think Davey, I don't know if he's on the sidelines or how that works. It's not popping up on screen for some reason. So I, I don't know. I don't know why. Also, Wes, someone had a question for you. Um, oh, yeah. Do you know Chu Chin, former Blackstone partner? I don't. Nope. Sorry, sweet boy. Someone asked, uh, Asian sweet boy asked a question. Yeah, sorry, brother. Uh, but no. But yeah, man. So that's that's pretty much, uh, that's basically the sh spiel. So. Yeah, yeah. So I would say join. And I want to talk about... Um, I love, I do. I love the comments and I love like the, cause it just allows us to kind of riff on some topics. So since we can't get Davey to join, maybe he'll be able to join soon. Uh, once we figure out what's going on. Um, but from what I saw, see, he said he had a heart attack at 35, mm -hmm. which is obviously very much on the low end of the spectrum to have a heart attack. Now, obviously Matt and I are not doctors and we don't, we don't claim to be, but I do think it's helpful to have this discussion as men. Um, so it's a great, uh, Davey, my first recommendation would be 100% watch the Game Changers documentary. And uh, Matt just watched it this weekend. So Matt, can we talk Can we talk about that? Because I'm yeah, just yeah. guessing, uh, number one, that Davey, I'm going to assume, I think I saw in the comments that you smoke. Um, and I think you said you eat like shit. That was your words, not mine. Um, let's talk about that. Because this is, I think, cardiovascular disease and heart attacks. I think it's, what, the number one killer of men in the United States right now. And I I think, I believe Dr. Michael Greger said that 85% of those deaths are self-inflicted. So uh, obviously Damn. there's a certain amount that's genetic, but 85% is their prediction as to, or hypothesis. Actually, I think this is this is actually in the data, so I don't even think it's a hypothesis. 85% of those are caused from behavior, not from genetics, which is very fascinating. Yeah, that's pretty nuts, man. And it, well, it's so funny too that that wouldn't be a... You know, imagine if cancer was that easy to cure. It would be like, oh, here you go. Like, mm -hmm. we got you. But like for this, it's, you know, it's, that's, I didn't know that. That's fucking nuts. And I, I watched oh, yeah. it. I watched the Game Changers last, 
last week. And I always, every, every time I watch something, I always go online to see like, all right, like, you know, I'm easily susceptible. Sure. They're like, if you, if you put like cool stuff, like, dude, I watching all those people like win those challenges and stuff instantly. I'm like, I have to stop eating meat, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, let me just try to temper and look up some, you know, possible counter arguments. And I didn't get too deep in the research, but it was like, I didn't really see any, I, I saw one that was like, all oh, the science just doesn't, they, they don't really give uh, the science they're showing is kind of flimsy. And I'm like, hmm, that's weird. Cause then you read the book, how not to die. And dude, I stopped reading it because it's just, it's 10 hours. I think the audiobook's 10 or 12 hours of just the science, science, large scientific studies as to how unnecessary it is to eat a ton of meat and how, sorry, I got a bug and how like, you know, we're, we're kind of, we're advertised into oblivion thinking we need to constantly eat meat. But dude, I, I still, I just got over the thing. Like if I didn't have meat on my plate, I was like, I didn't, that wasn't a real meal. That was a snack. Yep. And you, the coolest thing about the game changers was how they said, and I, I didn't get to fact check this as much, but it does make sense about how they're like, um, you know, you need to eat animals because animals have protein, but it's like the animals you eat get their amino acids from plants, mm-hmm. and then, you know? So it's like, they just kind of concentrate it. And it was like that, I, that was the thing that set it off for me. I'm like, I never, I never even thought about that, how the animals are kind of a middleman. And, you know, and it's not like, you know, and I like how they presented it to it. They're not like, oh, you better be vegan. It's like, no, it's just if you do that here, there's a gazillion studies for if you just at least cut down your meat, your chances of having a heart attack, just not even reduce the, the, the plaque in your arteries can will actually kind of start to lessen up and go away. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. that's crazy. They don't. How does that not penetrate kind of more and more, you know, to be like, oh, you can cure. Sorry, I shouldn't use it. Well, I can't because I'm not a doctor, but you can like reverse Arthro- arthrosclerosis, whatever it is, the plaque in your arteries by just not eating meat. And it's like, yeah, it's pretty wild. Come on, man. That's fucking nuts. If they, if that was a pill, dude, billion dollars, billion dollar industry. Oh, well, and that, that's kind of the argument. And, and, um, where I'm sorry, Matt, where do we land with Davey? I want to make sure we don't leave him hanging. Is there a way to bring him on or, or is there not? I just want to make sure. Let me see. I'll, it- try, I'll try him one more time. Cause it, it was, I don't know why it was, it wasn't a, Davey, yeah, Davey, we're, you we're trying for you, but. And if not Delco Jim, I'll, I might do Delco Jim too as a test because if Delco Jim comes on, I'll know it's tech on Davies. Let me see. So I got two. I got two boys possibly coming up. It's yeah, in, oh, dude, this is this is my bad. That's that was my bad, boys. There he is. Oh, is, this, is this Davy? No, no, this is Delco Jim. Dead Eye Davy. Delco Jim, what's up, brother? How's it going, guys? Good. How are you doing, man? So Del- I assume Delco, meaning like Delaware County. Delaware uh, County. Hell yeah! Awesome, man. That's where that's where I'm I'm from. Oops. Nice. All right, Del- Delco Jim. Let me pause you for a second. I'll pull you back up. I wanted to use. Yeah, you no screen. problem. I'll pull you right back up. Let me see. Dead Eye Davy. Yeah, Dead Eye Davy. It's uh, I don't. I think your camera's not on, my man. See. Hey, can you talk? Yeah, I can talk. Okay, we'll we'll just oh, nice. yeah we'll just listen to you talk. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, for some reason now, uh, Crowdcast switched it up on me where I have to um, pull it up. So ah, I don't want to be up. Sorry, nobody wants to stare at me anyway. Please, yeah, dude, dude, come on, dude, so, uh, come on, knock that off. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on, dude? We can hear you. We can't see you. So basically, uh, last Friday, I was having chest pains. And I just thought it was gas because I had the same chest pains before in the past. Went to the ER, did an EKG, came back, there was just gas. So I walked around for a week having a heart attack. Yeah. My uh, LAD artery was uh, 95% clogged, which they told me is the Widowmaker artery. artery. They said if that gets to 100% clogged, you have a 6% chance of survival. Jesus. I was the youngest person my doctor ever had to put a stent in that artery by a lot. And that's why I, I went to the doctor on Thursday, just a regular checkup. They did an EKG. They said it looked weird, but they weren't concerned. They didn't send me to the ER or anything. They sent me home. Went to the heart doctor that afternoon. They saw it, didn't send me to the ER. They just thought it was, they thought it was gas because I was having, I was burping a lot. Couldn't stop mm. burping. And then that night, I was, it was the chest pains were getting so bad. They were waking me up in the, the night Jesus. and it was like the first time my wife seen them. So she made me go to the hospital in the morning and they did EKG there. And I was like actively having a heart attack. 
Oh, shit, man. So how are you now? Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, brother. I'm all right now. They put a stent in and it relieved all the pain. But uh, so far, I feel all right. Uh, arms sore because they, they put the stent in. They go in through your wrist. And I guess they climb up through your veins to get to the arteries. So, like, my wrist is sore, but that's about it. So what's the, what are the, what's the plan when they let you out? What do they tell you to do? Exactly what my question was going to be. 100%. Like, okay. Now we've solved the short-term issue. What's the plan moving forward? Like, how how is the, how have the doctors been leading you in this? So so far, all I mean, I, I don't have my follow-up until Friday, but with my discharge paperwork, I'm on medicine probably for the rest of my life. It's like a blood thinner and a cholesterol medicine. But they did mm. my my cholesterol. This all came back pretty normal. It wasn't like I had high cholesterol. I'm not a giant fat dude. I'm like two. I was two oh nine when it happened. Yeah, I'm five nine to and I'm not skinny, but I'm not you know obese. No, I, I can uh, verify you're not giant fat dude. I saw you a couple weeks ago. <laughs> so, so I mean, what, it was what, probably I started smoking at thirteen. I quit cigarettes two years ago, but I was still vape. Uh, so that was probably a huge factor. But mm. still, at thirty five, that wouldn't be the only reason why my artery went ninety five percent. You know, blockage. It says most likely just genetics and you know, heart disease within my family, even though like no one really has it that I know of. Hmm. I just might what be you, first one. What are you eating like? Not a lot. So not great. I mean, I got two young kids, so I usually just pick off whatever they're eating during hmm. the day. And then, you know, the biggest problem is I was like hardcore on Mountain Dew. Mm. Oh, yeah. Like, okay drink like at least two 20 ounces a day because I, I don't like coffee and I would work a uh, grave shift. So it was like my coffee replacement was to slam a couple dues in the morning to keep me, uh, keep me energized. Yeah. So there's, there's no more of that. So basically I got to change my entire diet, which is for the better, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, dude, go ahead. Wes. Sorry, Sorry. Matt. No, please, please. Yeah, that, yeah that, I mean, there's as strong as motivator as any, you know, kind of life and death. I know I know a guy right now who has he's, – he's, he's a bit older. He's about 60. He has, like, really gnarly diabetes, and, dude, just won't stop with the food, won't stop with the mixed drinks and stuff. And it's just – you know, he's a little older, but it's still like, dude, what are you doing, bro? It kills me. But it's like, you know, you're, you're still – you'd be surprised how much you'd be able to – you know, and again, I'm not a doctor, obviously, but it's like – I'd be curious to see how, you know, what kind of changes you do. And obviously, like I said, if you need any help, dude, you know, we can definitely help you kind of structure just a, just a better diet, which will definitely not hurt you. So I feel comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I'm already wet food shopping. My whole fridge is full of, you know, grilled chickens and stuff I can have, which is fine. Like, it's not like I don't like that stuff. I just, it's easier when you have three kids and newborn to just order out than to make dinner. Yeah. Yeah, you know, me and my wife have separate schedules, so it's not like we can even, you know, make a family dinner every night. Mm. So it's just easier to order out, but I'm just gonna have to change it up. Well, and and did uh, David, I know this is gonna sound weird, but it's actually super comforting for me to hear your accent because I moved out to California probably about nine years ago, and I hear. <laughs> do you live around Delco? No, I live in uh, Ben Salem, right outside. Of okay, yes, yeah, yeah. So I can hear the accent, so it's cool to hear. Um, uh, do you mind if I if I throw some things out to you? But and it's just me saying, okay, if I were in your shoes, or if you were my brother, here's some things I would consider. Are you cool with me going down that road? Absolutely. All right, cool. Um, the first thing is, one hundred percent, I would recommend watching the movie The Game Changers. Um, have you ever heard of it? No, I never heard of it. I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, do you have Netflix, bud? Yeah. Okay, uh, definitely check it out on Netflix. Um, it's it's unbelievable. Now, just as a heads up, it is it's the whole documentary is about plant based dieting, but it but it's before you get turned off by that, it's not even telling you to go vegan. It's just saying plant based, and I really like that. I really like that terminology because it's saying, look, 
if you can't cut all the meat, that's fine, but just make sure the bulk of your diet is coming from vegetables. And I really mean that. Like, like think of what you're thinking of now, especially with people back in Philadelphia, Ben Salem, Springfield, Ridley, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where back, back east, but there is a tendency and my whole family's from back there. And this is what I used to think. It's like pizza on Fridays, if not, you know, Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays sort of thing and cheese steaks, et cetera. Imagine the most amount of vegetables that you've ever seen anybody eat on a plate in Philadelphia or around there and double that. Like that's what you should be eating every sing every single meal. Um, but the cool thing about Game Changers is it's not attacking you uh, from a standpoint of like, oh, go and eat vegetables because your mom said so or because the environment's calling you to do it. It's like, no, you go and eat vegetables because you can look at these top performers in sports, whether it be anywhere from like the UFC to Olympic weightlifting to boxing, et cetera, and showing some data, some really compelling data for you to say, okay, maybe I should be considering this. And then in particular, when you watch it, my vote would be that you pay attention to the scenes where they work with, I think it's like a, a fire department in New York City. Matt, do you remember that part? Yeah. And they literally show... They meet, so they have a guy go to this this fire department in New York, and they show this picture of an artery, of what an artery should look like. And it's just, you know, it's obviously just looks like a big, like, circle, right? And you kind of have this perimeter outline of it. And then they show what a clogged artery looks like, and it's, like, 90% clogged. And honestly, it just reminded me of the story that you told us in the beginning, right, that you had an artery, right, correct me if I'm wrong, but you had an artery that was, I think you said 95% clogged or something, correct? Yep, 95%. Yeah, man. So it's like, dude, that's that's fucking scary, especially because you've and got kids and so on. It's the um, main artery, so it's like the that's the one they call the widow maker. Like, I have yeah. a friend's mother just passed away two weeks ago. Out of just went to sleep, never woke up at night from that artery getting clogged. Yeah. So a couple low low hanging fruits. So number one, watch that like watch that movie today if you have a chance. Um, yeah. Number two, I'm gonna put in the comments right now. I just looked up a link for you. This so the book that Matt was mentioning is is from an author named Dr. Michael Greger. He's phenomenal. He wrote if you look go on Amazon, look up the book How Not to Die. I have one thousand percent would recommend you go and purchase that book like immediately. Um, but if you want a quick shortcut to start to get some information on your belt, he's got a website where he releases videos basically every day, um, and you can look up certain topics. So for instance, uh, I just looked up for you on his website. It's called nutritionfacts.org. I put in heart attack and he's got an article in there that says how to prevent a heart attack. And then he'll have a list of videos. Dude, it's unbelievable. Like for instance, one thing, if I remember correctly, because I, I read his book and I, I listened to watched borderline all of his videos, I believe, and don't quote me on this. So check it out on his website, two ground tablespoons of flaxseed a day, two ground tablespoons of flaxseed a day apparently have just as much, uh, just as many results, if not more results than, uh, than uh, blood pressure medication. So like things like that, again, don't quote me on that, go and watch it from the source, but it's those little things that, that what Matt was saying earlier, never really hit our ears because they get blocked by other marketing messages, right? Mm -hmm. So the data is already out there. And that's one thing And this guy, Dr. Michael Greger talks about all the time. He says, the data is already out there, just like the data was out there for smoking long before it hit mainstream knowledge that smoking caused cancer. It was already out there. The studies were done, I think it was like, it took 17 years for the data to really hit mainstream levels just because the market, the smoking industry did such a great job of clouding your brain with all this marketing. Like literally they used to have, they used to have um, doctors on advertisements saying doctors, rec I think it was like doctors, recommend Marbar or something like that. Some of the crazy stuff yeah. That's how much marketing can get in the way. And if you just think, if you kind of follow the money and I work in the investment industry, so like I can tell you all day long how to do this research, you just follow the money, right? At the end of the day, no company will be, no broccoli company will be able to outperform in terms of revenue. There's no, not a lot of financial incentive relative to pharmaceuticals, right? So, so broccoli will never be able to outperform from a revenue standpoint, uh, high-grade pharmaceuticals, and that's why you are recommended these things, in my opinion, or often hear about them. Um, man, I'm telling you, like, if we can get you as a team, like, we'll help support you, get you on the natural path, and it's like, maybe you can't go full vegan, and I'm not necessarily recommending full vegan, but like, hey, man, if you can, try just, just literally 
pounding yourself with vegetables every single meal, and especially cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and so on, and then adding the dark leafy greens, spinach, kale, et cetera. And look up some really health, some really tasty recipes for yourself um, because you want to make the game easier for you. But, dude, it would be really cool to see what would happen if you did that for like a week or two and then report it back to us um, about how you're feeling. And then another question is, how's your how's your exercise right now, brother, or how was it prior to the, to the uh, heart attack? Like my uh, job is pretty. You know, I walk. I would walk like fourteen miles a day just at work. Oh, nice. So what, do you, was, what do you do? Just out of curiosity. That's a, that's I'm nice. Working, you know. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Slot yeah. So you're walking. Yeah, we we would track ourselves every once in a while, and it was always like thirteen, fourteen miles a night. Because grave shift, we cover. There's a, there's less people, so we're covering the whole floor. So you're walking from the back to the front, from the back to the front, which is right. A work moving boxes they're like 50 pound boxes a lot like so i get exercise but oh, i actually go to the gym but uh i used to run and then once i started once i had the kids I didn't have time because i would wake up and then i gotta take care of them and then my wife gets home from work and i go right to work yeah so right now i'm just gonna have to make time to get back into running dude honestly though just as as a guy to a guy i think you're checking off the the exercise box pretty well like i wouldn't put so much pressure on you to go on and do exercise because if, if you're doing what you say you are which i believe you are right you're moving 50 pound boxes and you're walking an average of 14 miles a day right like, i mean matt i don't know what you think about that but that's an extreme yeah. amount of exercise every day yeah i used to do that when i was dog walking i was like i'd be dead i would i would do like about like 10 11 miles a day and it's yeah it crushes you yeah well, yeah what, i mean quarantine. I was up to like 221 within a week back at work. I was down to 209 without changing anything, but just walking at work. Yeah, dude, I think I think you're doing a great job with the exercise because it's baked in. If, if, I mean, if you think about it, all of us, like the, uh, the people who are just like sit down for a living, right? Like we're trying to replicate what you do just by going to the gym. So we have to yeah. carve out this little piece of time where we try to go and try to manufacture what it's like to be a moving human. You're doing that all day long, which is what we're supposed to be doing anyway. So I yeah. kind of think you're checking that box. Of course, I mean, if you added in some running or whatever, it's not it's it will it's not going to hurt you, right? It, like it'll it'll make your body your body a more efficient machine. But I think you're already checked the box there, man. I I honestly well, and one last thing: how is your water intake and how is your sleep? When I work, my water intake is great. I drink at least 50 ounces at work because they've got little 10 ounce bottles and I'm crushing yeah. one an hour and I work 10 hour shifts. So I'm doing at least 50 when I'm not at work. I don't drink like any water. That's the problem. Okay. So when you are at work, because your, your activity level is increased when you're at work, are you peeing clear? Yes. And I'm peeing. Okay. Like, I, like, as soon as I drink, I got to pee like within an hour. Oh yeah. Dude, I, I don't know if you ever saw this on our show before, but I, I carry this with me. <laughs> I love that thing. Oh, dude, full, full <laughs> gallon, and I try to get it done by the end of the day. Um, and I assume when you're at home, you're saying you're not really drinking at all, so you're, you're probably not peeing clear. My goal always, 100% of the time, is to pee clear at all times. Um, that just kind of is a, is a quick, easy litmus test for me. Um, and then how's your sleep, dude? Like if I, if I were to sit behind you, if Matt and I were to sit behind you and – and calculate how much you're sleeping for the last week, what would we see? My sleep is garbage. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. I most likely have sleep apnea. I have an appointment in two weeks with the pulmonologist. But I also, I work grave shift. So I get, before, you know, quarantine and everything, uh, I would work till 6 a.m. And I'd have to get up by like noon, take care of the kids. Mm. So I'm, mm. I'm getting home at like 6.30, making myself fall asleep as soon as possible and then getting up by noon for the day and taking care of my kids. Yeah. Matt, what do you, what do you think about that before I comment? Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, there, there's a source of potential kind of, you know, once you get all the kind of like the eating and the health stuff, obviously taken care of first, but I think that's a, a source of questing. And it, it, obviously this is just it, what this is like, what, was, what this is like Wes was saying, like what I would think uh, it's not necessarily like do this, but it's like, and it seems convenient to be on two different shifts for the kids. Cause like, you know, your wife has them in the morning, you work at night, you know, it, it, it is convenient, but like, would it ever be possible long-term to get off the night shift? Cause that will screw up your sleep, you know? And again, it's not like you have to do this or this and that, but you know, that might be a thing to start kicking around. Like, you know, what moves could I bust? And again, feel free to be like, no, I, I don't mind it. But what do you think yeah, about that? It's probably never going to happen because night shift 
makes maybe triple the money as they shift. Gotcha. No, um, that's totally fine too. So it's like, how could you? Like it was almost going to be a lot better once the kids were going to go back to school full time. Uh, then I had yeah. that surprise baby four months ago. So now I got to start all over for another five years. Gotcha. Well, congrats. <laughs> So the, here's what I'm thinking too. How can you optimize your sleep then? If you do have a little bit of time, how could you optimize the time you do sleep? To be honest, it's, I, it, I've been on it so long that it, I'm, I'm as used to it now. To, like, I'm getting like six hours. And I only work four days a week. So we're talking four days mm -hmm. out of the seven that I get less sleep. And then on the, the days that I don't work, I do get to sleep in. But from everything I read, there's no such thing as catching up on sleep. It's all bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Matt, is it cool if I jump in and say, yeah, something? yeah, please. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, so Davey, again, dude, I'll always talk to you like, like a brother or like, a, like as, as weird as that sounds or like a friend. Um, so if you were my brother, what I would tell you is number one, dude, if you can, I completely agree with Matt long term, if you can set your goal on, on, not working overnight because the data is is really clear and i'm all uh, dude i'm saying this out of like caring for you the data is super clear on this um i actually think they just listed night work i believe as like some sort of like was it like i forget how they categorize carcinogens but it was like a category one or category two carcinogen they, they ranked it just up there with with smoking it was it, it was like very close to it and the reason is because it throws off sleep balance so much um and our bodies are supposed we're supposed to sleep at night like we have a certain thing called the circadian rhythm um now if you like it i'm not hating on that at all but i would say hey man like number one if you would consider it long term for you and for your family can we get you off of night work like can we as a team kind of nudge you say hey man like you know and i totally get it you're saying that it pays multiples more but i would I would throw it out there that long term, if we start to think about like, okay, well, if we set the goals a little bit higher, maybe you could, there's other jobs out there where you can get paid even more so than you get paid on night work now in a daytime job, just something to consider. And then the other yeah. thing is, um, the other thing is, uh, is eight hours like i have found this to be true there's a small percentage of the population this is not true for but eight hours as best as we can and then eight hours of quality sleep if you can and i know it's extremely difficult like trust me when i was in new york working on wall street it like it was borderline not possible like three to four to five hours of sleep was what we got like every single night except for like saturday nights um but i can tell you now being on the other side that making myself like being really rigid around minimum like I try, I try my best for eight hours every night um i typically land seven and a half to, to eight and a half hours dude it's a game changer right like i i can tell you there's so much data and science out about this and especially like when you go to sleep that is when your body replenishes itself like like absolutely that's when your hormones rebalance that's when that's when the majority of things happens to repair all the damage that you did during the day so um that might be an area and again it's not going to change overnight i totally understand that um but i think i i'd be i'd be really curious to see what happened if if we if you started getting more sleep and better quality sleep and it's little things it's uh, and you might be saying well wes you know fuck you because i can't do that right now i totally i totally understand that i know what i'm saying is much hard it's much easier to say than do that's what i'm saying over the long run if we can start to tweak that over time but in the short term little things like matt was saying that you can do increasing the quality of your sleep dude there's this sleep mask that i get and as as weird as this sounds this sleep mask like changed my life because one of the things of quality of sleep is darkness mm -hmm. right like pure as close you can get to pure darkness now it does kind of cost a lot of money to completely black out your room and it's kind of a pain in the butt so an alternative is to get a really high quality sleep mask i'll have to find a link for you that matt and i both use the same sleep mask that thing's a game changer. Like, do you currently use a sleep mask at all? Oh, Davey, did we lose him? No, but my room's blacked out just from everyone that works night shit. Nice. Got me. Oh, cool. Gotcha. Still there? Yep, no, that, that makes sense. Yep. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. We can hear you, bud. Yeah. I can so, hear yeah, my room's blacked out from night shit. It's already good. Well, how do you feel about this? What are, what are your thoughts going for? What were the things that you kind of planned on kind of doing? My biggest thing is just was as soon as it happened, like I know I just got to change my diet, got to stop smoking, and then just a little bit more exercise. I think I'll be all right. Like 
even just just a stent, like I already feel fine. Mm-hmm. Like just putting that by artery made me feel a hundred percent within you know six hour period. So I just gotta you know get better get better with my nutrition and definitely the sleep the whole sleep thing that has been my issue since I've gone to night shift. I've yep. talked to doctors about it, and to be honest, like I know all the problems with it. It's just nothing I can do right now about it. Sure. You were saying. Yep. Totally good. So my kids are a little bit older and can get themselves to school like that. No, for no, absolutely. I'm all right with the night shift. I'm always been a night person, but I also don't have problems sleeping during the day. Like some people can't sleep when it's light out or that like I can sleep, I can fall asleep at any point at any time, anywhere. Gotcha. So working at night won't be as bad for me if I can actually get the eight hours of sleep when I get home instead of yeah. taking care of the kids all day. Yep. Yeah. And dude, let me just say this for, for what it's worth. Uh, uh, it's incredibly admirable and respectful, like what you're doing for your family. Like that's, you know, so, so just uh kind of big props to you, man. That's uh that's really cool to hear that you're doing. Cause I know that you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for your kids. Yeah. So yeah, I'd be kicking and bitching, man. If I had to stay up all night, I'd be fucking crying. I'd be crying like a baby. I'd be like, oh, this sucks. That's a tough it thing. Man. Up the first thing. year, the first year, I was I was bad. Like my wife sent me to see a psychiatrist because I was like, well, I couldn't keep my temper under control. I was losing my mind, and then like I went to the doctor and I'm like, you just you need more sleep. Mm. I'm like, yeah, I can't do that. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'll be curious to check in, man, because like I said, I, I think it'll all the, the things you can control. Uh, I think will help you in a lot. Are avoiding the inflammatory foods like the sugar, the smoking. Obviously, you know that should be absolutely a risk smacker if you get caught. And you know, because there, there's like art, there's arterial cloggage and there's also inflammation, which kind of constricts your arteries. You know, just from the little stuff I, I've seen. So it's like you know, if you're able to kind of, depending on what your definition of healthy is, if you're able to like go ham on that, since the sleep's not so much of an option. Yep. That'll that'll be a thing you can really do that'll probably help. And and Davey, I am sending also so so two action items immediately, if you don't mind if we give them to you. Number one, watch that movie The Game Changers. Number two, um, I just put in the comments uh, again another link. I think you guys can see it. Phenomenal speech by Dr. Michael Greger. Kind of goes through some some really fundamental um, uh, information and diet recommendations. And dude, like I'm sharing this with everybody. So I, I'd be, it'd be really awesome if you took some time. I think it's like an hour long speech. You can just play it in your ear while you're driving or something. I'd highly, highly, highly recommend it. And then dude, would love to hear back from you if you made some of these changes or even if you haven't, even if you come back to us, whatever next week or the weekend, whatever it is, or, or I don't care, you know, at the end of this week, um, and say, Hey, like I'm struggling you, you, of actually implementing this stuff. Cause we can talk about all of that. Like we're here to here as a, as a team to support you guys in doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, that is the important thing. All of this stuff, I don't ever want to seem like it's like I'm moralizing or being like, do this, do that. This is all whatever works for you. This is the stuff. Yep. If I don't get sleep, I'm a crab. If I don't eat well, I feel like shit. Like these are the things that I've experimented with and be like, okay, these actually really do work for me. But you know, yep. everyone is different and everyone has different things they're after. Um, yep. Should we, what time is it right now? I think we're coming up on, okay, 12.25. Um, should we do the, should we put out what we're trying to get done this week? Yep. And yeah, then come so, back Friday. Yeah, real quick, Davey. Uh, again, I commend you, man, for doing all the hard work for yeah, your family. Man. Thanks for joining us, brother. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, glad you're all right, too. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, man. All right, cool. Yeah, let's hop into it. So this part of the segment, what we're, Matt and I are going to do, kind of call your shots like Matt calls it. Uh, Matt says um, in the beginning of the week, which today is obviously Monday, saying, okay, what are we out to accomplish this week? And then we circle back on Friday and say, okay, what were our wins? So uh, yeah, Matt, if you're game, let's do it, brother. And and guys, follow along. So when you're listening to this, do it yourselves as well. It's like, what? just name a few. And if you can't name five different goals, then name one. Like what's the one goal you're trying to accomplish this week? What's one thing? And if, and if you have two or three, then, then even better. But then the next thing is time block it in your schedule so that you can work on it throughout the week. Hell yeah. All right. So here is the, and we'll eventually have, I think, some sort of little thing that might make it easier, like a little uh, template. Yep. So the things that I'm, this is what I have to get done. My learning modules for psych and all, and I'm, I'm going to specifically say I want to get done the next, let's say that there's, I have them in like little chapters. So there's like the 1.0 to 1.4, 2.0 to 2.5. I'm yep. going to do all my 3.0s. That, that includes like figuring out exactly the subject material, 
um, and then recording the videos and making the little slides. While so I'm going to try to do a whole host of learning modules. Um, I got to start working on my personal website. Um, nice. Yeah, I got to start working on it. Back out, a bleak huh? show. Shirt off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just a picture of my ass. Um, oh, the big news is I got my. I thought I lost my manuscript. I was writing a second book, and I sent my hard drive. Uh, to this guy Daniel, dude, shout out Daniel, big time. He, some other guy tried it. They like, oh, we can't do it. And then my butterly sent it. Was like telling someone else like to do this. And the other person's like, it's impossible. Sent it to my boy Daniel, and uh, dude, he somehow took a hard drive that completely crapped out and got me my manuscript that I had like eighty-five pages written on it that I've you know drafted and redrafted like ten times already. Mm -hmm. So he found that and got that back to me, which I'm, oh, oh. I'm in. I told him I'm I am in your service. Um, so yeah, so I'm able to, so I'm going to start writing too. So I'm going to try to, uh, get like four, I'm going to say four chapters done. That'll be a good one to check in with me and four workouts. And I got to complete my last two miles so that I do 20 miles this month. Awesome. Hell yeah, man. Cool. All right. So for me, uh, Matt, um, I am committing to get the scorecard done now for everybody. Dude, I'm so pumped that you set this up and Davey, I'm super, super pumped you hopped on, bro. Like that was, that like. That was worth all of like the headache, the freaking headache of setting this thing up in the down. <laughs> Just super cool to connect with guys and, and be there for each other. So, Davey, I'm super uh, thankful for you, buddy. And then, uh, Matt, thank you for setting this all up. This is awesome. This is oh, really, yeah, really cool. I'm so pumped about this. And then, um, the, who was the other guy? The guy that came on for a minute? Oh, shit. Uh, Delco, where do you go? Delco Jim. Yeah, because I'm wondering, uh, maybe because I know we don't have time today, but I wonder if he can hop on on Friday. It'd be cool to have him on if he's game for it. So, Doko Jim, if you're still listening, brother, would love to have you on on Friday if we can Hell figure yeah. it out. Um, so, uh, so, and if we don't, if we don't figure it out, you know, just slap us because it's not us being rude. It's just I think you know, especially for me, I'm very new at this. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. So, uh, want to get want to? I'm going to commit to you guys to getting the scorecard gun done, and that is to have everybody on a uniform scorecard so we can all see our progress. So it's, are you getting the proper sleep? Are you taking the proper water intake? Are you eating the proper nutrition? All of those things. And that is to, uh, it'd be cool to come up with a point system for everybody and say, okay, how many points did you score this week on your on your scorecard? That'd be pretty uh, cool. So we're going to try that. And then, uh, and then I personally, Matt and I are doing this weight loss competition right now. Um, so I'm trying to kick butt in that and hit all of my workouts for the week and all of my nutrition for the week. Um, and then uh, we, for our investment company, we're, we're currently creating a new website and we're doing uh, a, what's called a spotlight video. So I want to make more progress on that. We've got, we've got the shooting scheduled for tomorrow. It's pretty cool. We've got Hollywood uh, uh, videographers. So that actually Beyonce's personal videographer is our videographer uh for here yeah it's pretty it's damn pretty that's awesome dude oh yeah so the guy was beyonce <laughs> personal videographer and he was uh p Diddy's videographer for a while um so yeah pretty pretty interesting story so yeah we got the video so we we you know that's how we roll up in here in uh orange county california <laughs> um and then uh I've got all my water and everything, but then um, we are launching new marketing channels. So I'm learning about Facebook advertising and so on. So I want to make significant progress uh, on those projects. And a lot of my, a lot of my, you know, quote like calls for the week are making progress on major projects that there's no way they're going to be done by the end of the gotcha. week. So for guys who are listening on those types of things where you're working on larger projects, just set your expectations of of okay, how much progress is reasonable for the week and how can you set a little milestone there? So for instance, in our marketing efforts, one of the milestones is doing the next video. So that's like, that's my little milestone. It doesn't complete the project, but I need to make some progress on there. So um, so that's it, man. Um, and then whatever else, we're in the investment business. So it's, oh, one no, one other thing, I'm sorry. One major thing I wanna do is I got into this industry because I love working with with finance and I love working with people. Um, but I want to take it to the next level of like, I, I love our Matt, will you and I do our, our vision boards, et cetera. So I want to create a, a coaching vision board for all of the clients that we have and like have it in a binder. So I keep it with me at my desk every day. Um, and like it, so for instance, like for you, it'll have you and Brittany and Maya, right? And then I want to make sure that I'm checking in with you guys every single month. It's like, okay, are we on track with your financial goals? Where are we? And how can I help you get there? Like, I want to, I want to commit to that. I want to have a physical document, almost like a Bill Belichick on the sidelines of the New England Patriots. It's like, this is my team. Am I leading them and supporting them properly? 
right? Like no more computer stuff. Cause in the computer, everything gets kind of lost. Cause there's so much stuff like th the stuff that's printed out to me is the most important. That's why I print my goals document out just like you do. Mm -hmm. Um, so I need to have a physical binder with me at all times that I'll carry with me everywhere. Um, and make sure I'm checking in with you guys. So like I can emotionally and mentally like look at you and your family every single week and saying, am I doing what I need to be doing to support these people? So that, that actually is it. That's my number one project for this week for sure. That's awesome, man. I always love how you bring a really human element into the financial sector, which is like, usually it's just people. The The stereotype of it is just people. And I think you would say there's a decent amount of people who do do this, who are just kind of like, you know, raking people. Thanks. Got the money yep. later. And, you know, but I, I, the fact that you're like looking at the actual human beings who stuff yep. you're, I, I like that a lot. Dude, it's, um, it's, it's just, it's a team to me. It is yeah. like, it is like, I feel super blessed as corny as it sounds, super blessed that I love what I do. I love I love finance. I love math. And I but I love psychology and I love working with people. Like that's that's my DNA, helping people get to where they want to go. And I'm just fortunate that I landed in a career that allows me to do that. Um, so uh, I need to not I need to not take that for granted. I need to keep on like making it more like better and better and better and being congruent with I I want to win the championship with you. Like that's what a coach is. A mentor is a little different. A mentor is just like, oh, I'll give you some advice and you go off and you do it. Great. If you don't, a salesperson is just like, oh, I want to, I want to get you to say yes. And then I get your money and then it's done. It's like, no, I want to be a coach. Like we have vested interest in winning the championship. If you don't win the championship or we don't win the game, then I don't win. That's how I want to approach my career. So, and that's how I want this team to be, right? Like, it's like, we have a vested interest. We want to get you to where you want to be because as men, we need a support system. Oh yeah, man. Dude, like I said, this for the ones that we were doing without even putting them out yet, you know, I think they're they're all getting released, but like for a while they weren't out. With nobody, I kept telling you, with nobody even watching it, I would still do this every single week because it keeps me on track. And it's like the thing that helps me tremendously is giving order to my day and my time, how I spend it. And like at the end of it, I'm like, oh, I'm I'm actually checking progress off rather like and I've said this a thousand times and just being like what am I doing? It's like, no, I, I set my thing up. I did it. I had my daily, my daily habit scorecard. That was like a humongous one of like, I think it is the, uh, oh shit. What is it? Watching like some sort of anything it can be like two minutes of like any sort of like inspirational videos, which again, like you were saying, like pe people like all oh, they're hokey, they're this or that, but it, it does change your mentality just a little bit. Even if it's like a degree, like you're saying, and it, I, I tried that out. I'm like, yeah, that's true. So I meditate, make sure I exercise, make sure I write, uh, make sure I eat vegetables. I do one act of love a day for whoever, typically it's my wife, and make sure I get my sleep. And if I'm if I'm checking off those habits, I'm I'm a pig in mud, dude. I'm chilling. You know, yep. whatever else is going on. Like, you know, we talked about the environmental stimuli. I have my little skull on my desk, reminds me oh, of my yeah. mentality. Whenever I'm like hemming and hauling, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna die anyway. So let's do this, you know. So it's pretty uh we can talk more about that, setting up the environmental stimuli and all that stuff. Yep. But yeah, dude. Thanks again, dude. It's uh, it's been awesome, and we'll uh, we'll be back Friday to check in whether or not we actually did our stuff. And like you said, I people should do this along because you know we'd love to have people on and share their wins, their losses, and you know whatever else is in between. Yep. And then just so the guys know, um, again, thank you guys so much for joining us. I'm loving this live thing. We've got a whole bunch of other vineyard, uh, of other venue, uh, interviews that we've done with other people. Like for instance, like I did an interview with one of my dance instructors, who's like this awesome kind of polymath dude. He's like super Jack guy, incredible at dancing. Um, uh, also like power lifter, bodybuilder. So like I did a bunch of those interviews that we'll post throughout the week just to get them out there. Um, so you guys can listen to them uh, on the on the uh, on the show. So um, and if there's any suggestions you guys have or specific topics you guys want to listen to um, or hear us chat through or even be on the show for, then let us know. And then also any wins that you have through the week, what I've noticed is really helpful is like take a little uh, a picture of it and send it to us, or like or bring it next, or bring it at the end of the week. And so those are little cool trophies for you um, to just to keep in your in your kind of picture trophy board. So we'll explain more on that at the end of the week too. But um, it's uh, super grateful for you, Matt, and grateful for all you guys listening. So thank you guys. Thanks, man. All right. All right, everybody. Farewell. Later, dudes.